So if you struggle with long division, then this is the video for you. Because what I'm gonna do for this problem is I'm gonna divide this polynomial by that polynomial using long division, step by step, and explaining everything. So the first thing, when we're doing long division, we always wanna make sure that we have our radicand, or our polynomial, our dividend in descending order. That means we have the highest power going down in descending order. And the same thing for our divisor, all right? So you can technically say there is a one there and you could even say there's a zero if you really want to. But just notice four, three, two, one, zero, we're all good. Now, one of the tips that I always like to give my students when they're doing long division is while we're gonna keep everything centrally located right here, always feel free to do a little work on the side. Because I feel like sometimes with long division, that's where a lot of students make mistakes. So what we're gonna do is everything is in descending order, right? We have the first power going through. All right, so we're always gonna take the first term of our divisor and divide it into the first term of our dividend. To understand and explain this, we're gonna take a three x to the fourth and divide it as an x to the first power. That is the first question we are asking ourselves. How many times does x evenly divide into a three x to the fourth? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we can use our rules of exponents, right? Can't do anything with the numbers here, but x to the fourth divided by x to the fourth is gonna be three x to the four minus one, which is going to give us here a three x cubed. Okay, so that is gonna be the first answer in our quotient. Now, once we find that first answer in our quotient, what we're simply gonna do is we're gonna take that term and we're gonna multiply it by both terms of our divisor. Then we're gonna take that answer and we're going to write it below. So a three x cubed times x is going to be a three x to the fourth. A three x cubed times four is going to be a positive 12 x cubed. Now, if you did your long division correct, these two terms are always gonna be exactly the same because the next step that you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to subtract your rows. Now you might say, well, Mr. McLogan, what about all of these? Well, there's a couple different ways we can teach long division to do that. You could use place values. You could use a zero x squared, a zero x plus zero, and then subtract them. You could also do the bring it down method, right? But basically we don't have any more values here. So I'm just gonna use these parentheses here and I'm gonna eventually bring these down to the next term. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract this. Now again, notice how I'm using my parentheses here because these are the two terms that I can subtract from here. Everything else is really a zero. So a three x to the fourth minus a three x to the fourth is going to be a zero x to the fourth. You can write it in there if you want to, but again, zero times anything is just zero. So I'm just gonna disregard it and leave it off. A 10 x cubed, minus a positive 12 x cubed is now going to be a negative two x cubed. All right, then if you want to, we can go ahead and bring everything down because they definitely, they technically were just subtracted by a zero of their term. So therefore it's a five x squared minus a seven x, it's a positive seven x minus a five. All right, now we have just completed the first kind of round of applying long division. So all we're simply gonna do is rinse and repeat. How many times does x divide into a negative two x cubed? How many times does x divide into a negative two x cubed? So again, that's gonna be a negative two x to the three minus one. Well, that's just gonna get, leave me with a negative two x squared. So I'm gonna take a negative two x squared. That's the second term of our quotient. And again, just like I did in the first round, I'm gonna multiply that by both terms of our divisor. So a negative two x squared times x is going to be a negative two x cubed. Notice how they're exactly the same. That's what I'm looking for. Negative two x squared times four is going to be a negative eight x squared. So now I can go ahead and put my parentheses on the round and subtract. Why did I not do that before? So again, we're gonna subtract them vertically and then notice these, since these are exactly the same, you're subtracting them, that's gonna to go to negative two x cubed minus a negative, that turns to a positive. Therefore, it's gonna give you zero x cubed. Again, remember that double negative makes a positive. So a negative five x squared minus a negative eight x squared is now going to give me a positive three x squared. Since these are subtracted by zero, you can just go ahead and subtract them from zero or bring them down. So that's gonna give me a positive seven X minus five. You can also not worry about bringing them down till you actually need them. That's a usually a little bit more quicker way, but I'm trying to keep some accounting of where they are and where they're going, all right? So now let's go through the process one more time. So now we're on round three, right? X divides into a three X squared. So three X squared divided by X, that is going to be a three X to the two minus one, right? Which is three X to the first power. So how many times does X divide into three X squared? That's gonna be a positive, 3x. Now we take that term and we multiply it times every term over here. So 3x times x is going to now leave me with a 3x squared. Again, those are exactly the same, so I now feel comfortable. 
I'm doing this correctly. 3x times 4 is going to be a positive 12x. Subtract your rows. This is going to go to 0 again. 7x minus 12x. So if you have $7 but you owe me 12, you now owe me $5. And then I can bring down the negative 5. How many times does x divide into a negative 5x? So negative 5x divided by an x. Well, now we just know the x's are going to divide out, so that's going to leave me with a negative 5. So I have a negative 5. And then again, last thing, multiply the negative 5 times x, negative 5 times 4. So negative 5 times x is a negative 5x. Negative 5 times 4 is going to be a negative 20. Then we go ahead and subtract the rows. And let's see here. We have a negative 5x, so let's go, those are exactly the same, so it goes to 0, yes. Negative 5 minus a negative 20, so that's now going to be a positive 15. And here's where we have a problem. x does not evenly divide into 15, right? 15 cannot be divided by x. So therefore, this is what we're going to call our remainder. Now to write your quotient when you have a remainder, is you're simply going to add it, and you're going to take the remainder, 15, and put it over your divisor x plus 4.